Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday, everybody. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and we will be exceedingly glad in it because God is good and He's worthy to be praised. Good morning. Praise God. Oh, there actually is a place called Goshen Springs, Mississippi. Wow. Uh, I was getting ready to say, welcome to Goshen this morning. Praise God. Happy Monday, everybody. Um, this is going to be a tremendous week. I'm so excited about it. This is the week of Grace Life Conference, the homecoming. And um, I'm just excited about people coming and on their way uh, here uh, to the I call it the International City, College Park, Georgia. Amen and amen. Well, uh, let's send some blessings out to you this morning. We, um, according to Genesis, how um, the priest Melchizedek blessed Abraham by saying, and um, I just want to release the blessings out to you guys today. Uh, we send blessings to Germany this morning. Uh, we send blessings to Oakland, California, Ohio, Baltimore, Maryland. You are blessed today. Chicago, you are blessed today. Uh, good morning, World Changers Nation. Uh, <laughs> the International City College Park. That's right, man. Uh, good morning. Send blessings to Oklahoma. Uh, Queens, New York, Mobile, Alabama. Um, man, I used to be in Mobile a lot in the beginning of this ministry. Uh, bonjour to those of you who are with us from France this morning. Chicago, Oregon, Hampton, Georgia. Uh, we send blessings to you today. In the UK, we say you're blessed today in Tampa, Florida, Stockbridge. Katie, Texas is here with us today in the name of Jesus. Good morning from San Bernardino, Arlington, Texas, Trinidad, Nigeria, Orlando. We say you're blessed today. Denver, Colorado, Upland, uh, uh, Florida, Nigeria, Duluth, Georgia. We send blessings to you guys in the name of Jesus in England. We send blessings to y'all. Uh, Los Angeles, California on the West Coast, College Park in the house, uh, Douglasville, Georgia, Buffalo, New York. We send blessings to you, Barbados, Tyler, Texas. We say you guys are blessed today. Blessed Inglewood, Jamaica. We say you are blessed going in, blessed coming out. Stratford, Connecticut is with us today. Uh, Detroit, Michigan, we declare that you are blessed today in the name of the lord jesus christ uh pakistan is here with us today colorado tyler texas um that's where my friend rw shambach was from port elizabeth dallas georgia south fulton south africa orlando again uh, we say you're blessed in Jesus name. Danville, Virginia, Ireland is here with us today. We say you are blessed today. Papua New Guinea, Kenya. We send blessings to you guys today. Mozambique. We send blessings to you. India. We send blessings to you in the name of Jesus. The Bahama. Uh, we send blessings to you guys today. Pittsburgh, Shreveport. We say you're blessed today, Boswell. We say you're blessed today in the name of Jesus. And so we send blessings to everybody that's here with us today. And I pray that you are going to start this week off in victory. We're not going to try to get victory this week. We're going to start our week off in victory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, start the week off in victory. Amen. Well, praise God. I got something good I want to share with you today, but uh, let's go ahead and get Psalms 91 equipped. Psalms 91 equipped. If you're ready, 
Let's go ahead and do that. Repeat after me. I will dwell in the shelter of the Most High God. I will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. You are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness nor any disaster that strikes at midday because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home. No evil can befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling. God has ordered his angels to guard, defend and protect me in my house. God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. Because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears. And he will honor me with his presence and power. He will reward me with long life. And he will show me his salvation. I declare right now that all is well with me and my house. I am Psalms 91 equip all day to day. I walk in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus name. Amen. I, I, I said that last part. I will walk in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is a comforter and he won't necessarily take the trouble away from you like a lot of us think, but he will get in the middle of the trouble with you to comfort you. There are just too many illustrations in the word of God where, you know, the Holy Spirit showed up to comfort. And I think we sometimes think he's going to just take all of the challenges in life away from us. No, he'll comfort us as we go through those challenges. He is a mighty comforter. And so I'm just declaring that the comforter, um, which is the Holy Spirit, will comfort you in the middle of challenging times, in the middle of testings, in the middle of a lion's den, in the middle of a fiery furnace. I mean, you remember God didn't take away the fire from the three Hebrew boys. He got in there with them. And, and and provided the comfort. And sometimes God will not only show up and comfort you in the middle of things, but he'll show up, comfort you, and then make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. And so I'm, I woke up this morning just celebrating the truth that I have a comforter and that no matter what life throws your way and life is going to throw things your way. I, I'm convinced that's why we we go through this stage of getting an earth suit, going through life, and then life throws stuff at us and then we we grow from it. And I guess my question is, I mean, I just I just really believe that we're we're brides in preparation and there's just so much we're going to understand uh, uh, later on. It's just a lot of things that are happening 
to your life that we have to go to the word to to really get an understanding of it. But I just believe that God will be your comforter. And I declare that today, that the comforter shows up in the middle of whatever you go through. Uh, The comforter shows up in the middle of whatever you go through. He is a mighty comforter. And I receive him today as my comforter. And I want you to receive him today as your comforter. There's nothing that you will encounter and go through where the Holy Spirit won't show up to comfort you. And I just I just trust that. I just trust that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I got something I want you to think about it. You know, Grace Life's coming up. And um, this week I'm going to be sharing some things with you that I think uh, will challenge you to to think about it. Uh, I want to spend some time this week talking about experiencing the freedom of grace. And I, I, I want to talk about the ruling on rules, the ruling on rules. Um, I don't know what it is about us. We, 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 we continue to look for a rule to keep. And, and we have a Jesus, you know, but sometimes we prefer let's go get some more rules. We've been delivered from the, uh, from operating under the, under the law. And now we live under grace, but knowing that people still like to go and see if they can get some more rules to keep. Uh, we operate under a law or we, we operate under the law, trying to achieve something that Jesus has already achieved. And so I want to look at that today. Um, Colossians chapter two, if you'll flip over there, I'm going to be reading out of the NLT. Colossians chapter two, verse 20 through 23. And uh, I want you to pay attention to this. This this was really eye opening. Colossians two, verse 20 through 20, verse 20 and 23. Okay. Now look what he says. You have died with Christ. And he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. So why do you keep on following the rules of the world, such as don't handle, don't taste, don't touch? And verse 23 says this. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. Wow. They provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. <clears throat> so what is he talking about? He's talking about the rules that seem wise. The rules that seem wise because they require a strong devotion. Oh, yes. They, 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 they require a pious self-denial. They require severe bodily discipline. But they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. Now we need to we need to crack this open just a little bit here. Because rules are the same as the law that we've been delivered from. Rules assume we are we are dirty and distant from God. We didn't begin our relationship with God by rules. We began our relationship through Jesus. That's how we started this thing. We started our relationship through Jesus Christ. In fact, there, there's scripture for that. Look at Colossians 2 and 6 while you're there. Colossians 2 and 6 says, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Just like you accepted Jesus, as your, you must continue to follow him. Somebody asked me one time, they said, now that I'm born again, what do I do? My answer to that question was get to know Jesus. Get to know Jesus. Follow 
him. Rather than following him, we start searching and seeing if we can get some more rules to follow. Okay. Uh, in fact, look at Galatians while we're while we're on the topic. Galatians chapter uh, three. Galatians chapter three. And when you get to Galatians chapter three, look at verses one through three. Galatians three verses one through three. He says, uh, verse one, O foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as if you had seen a picture of his death on the cross. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. How foolish can you be? After starting your Christian lives in the Spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human efforts? Wow. Wow. That's strong. You see, a rule-driven, law-driven self-improvement program is not the way to growth. But a lot of Christians think that it is. A lot of Christians think that. Uh, let me say it again. A rule-driven, law-driven self-improvement program is not the way to growth. But a lot of people think that it is. We grow, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the truth about that. We grow just as we were saved. We grow in personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He is enough. He is enough. Glory be to God. Jesus is enough. Praise God. So look to Jesus, not to the law. He is the one that will enable us to overcome the pull of the world. You know, the world's pulling at you. The world's pulling at you. The world, the world's, you know, trying to get you to walk in the flesh, trying to get you to stay in bitterness, trying to get you to walk in fear. The world's pulling at you, man. And I'm telling you right now, look to Jesus. He will enable you to overcome the world. In fact, look at this um, Jude 24 and 25. He says, now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling again and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. Are you kidding me? Wow. All glory to him who alone is God our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All glory and majesty and power and authority are his before all time and in the present and beyond all times. Amen. I mean, Jesus is enough, dude. It's like, you know, now unto him in the King James who is able to keep you from falling and who will present you faultless or without a single fault. I mean, I'm I'm sticking with Jesus, man. I'm sticking with Jesus and I'm, you know, I, I'm choosing to look to Jesus, not trying to look for some more laws. I'm going to stick with Jesus and he's going to train me and show me how I should be operating um, in this um, amazing life that I have been chosen it's like I've been born into royalty the day I got born again with Jesus. And I'm not I'm not going backwards, man. And there's just so much that has happened on the inside of me because of my relationship with Jesus versus me trying to keep a set of laws versus me trying to come up with more rules and regulations. And then not only do I come up with more rules and regulations, but I then try to put push those rules and regulations on other people and then judge them by the things that I think I should be struggling to do. And nah, I think I'm going to just stick with Jesus. I'm going to walk with him and he'll show me, you know, how to get my thinking straight. He'll show me 
how to how to walk in in his ways. He's able to keep me from falling. Thank you, Lord. So grace is not about you falling all the time and then using grace as an excuse for it. But he's able to keep you from falling and he's able to present you without a fault. That is uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And so, yeah, man, I, I thought I thought that could bless you today. And, um, you know, I, imagine what it's going to be like at Grace Life, the homecoming. You got all of these amazing ministry gifts coming out, sharing the gospel of grace. And my prayer is that the place will be just soaking in the presence of God just soaking in the presence of God and that things will be done supernaturally that in some cases you won't even, you won't even be able to explain it. And so that's why I am. I'm at that particular place right now where I'm just uh, soaking in the presence of God, praying that God's presence will be so available to the people that are there that every service will will be a time of feeling god i mean i mean feeling after him literally you know and uh i just thank god for the freedom of grace um yeah i, I i'm the same way god's grace is everything i ever needed yep it's everything i ever needed and jesus is more than enough jesus full of grace and truth and I, i'm just so excited about it i um I got so excited about yesterday's sermon. I think I must have screamed the whole time. I'm trying to rest my voice a little bit today, but I I, 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 I couldn't. I mean, I could have helped it, but I, I just I didn't want to because I just thought this is this is our God who is filthy rich in mercy. This is our God who is filthy rich in mercy and grace. And, I, and I'm telling you, I, 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 I just and. The thing about it, I hadn't even finished it yet. I'll finish it next Sunday. But I was like, I have a reason now to walk worthy of the calling that I've been called to. I have a reason why. And uh, yeah, man. So if you did not uh, get in with us yesterday on Sunday sermon, go and uh, look that up and and um, listen to it. It'll really, really get your heart prepared for grace life. And um, yeah, this is this is awesome. So anyway, uh, make your mind up. You're going to have a great day today. And uh, I, I declare the blessings of God over your life and that uh, God's going to do some amazing things today. Just expect it. Why not? You know. It's just uh, somebody said they watched yesterday sermon three times. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a lot in that. It's a lot in that, man. But uh, it 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 does things. I mean, I've been going to bed for the last few weeks, and and all I've been meditating on this while I'm, you know, when I lay my head on the pillow. I am a son of God. That's my position, and God, I have an inheritance, and God did all of this before the foundations of the world. And I brought nothing to the table. He did it so he could he could spend eternity pointing to us, showing the ages to come, the riches of his grace and mercy. And I'm like, man, what is that going to feel like for the rest of eternity, knowing that we're going to be the object of God's grace and mercy? Is this me bragging on us forever? That's awesome. That's that's awesome. So I received this gospel and um, I bless you today in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and that everything's going to be well for you today. I just pray again yesterday. I declare extravagant breakthroughs and I just declare extravagant breakthroughs over your life. That something something good is going to happen to you. Something good is going to happen to you. Something Life changing is going to happen to you. And uh, boy, I tell you what, all is well. All is well. Amen. Well, hey, y'all have a great day today. Uh, 
I'm, I'm getting ready to hop back in the study, getting ready for Grace Life, Ministers Conference, men's meeting. It's going to be an amazing time. Amen. And I appreciate you guys, all your prayers and, and everything for me and, and my wife and my family and, and all the world changes around the world. Well, God bless you. Go and make a mark that cannot be erased. And remember, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be just fine. Whatever you're going through is just an interruption that life brings, you know, to try to distract you from your growth and your relationship with Jesus Christ. Just don't let it happen. Just just suck it up and and hold your head up and say, no, nah, I don't think I'm going I don't think I'm going to walk in fear today. And the temptation comes No, nah, I don't think I'm going to yield to you today. I, I kind of know what you up to now and just walk on in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen amen you guys are are a blessing uh tomorrow is uh tuesday and i think i'll be here with you again on tomorrow so have a good day today and the best is yet to come in jesus name bye bye everybody